Hi guys and welcome back to What's Going On HD and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Transfer Series which is of course now the final instalment because we are now looking at Tottenham, West Brom, West Ham and Wigan and in this series, if you've not watched another episode of this series already I'll put annotation on the screen and, and links and stuff like that to the other episodes and in it I discuss who I believe each Premier League club should be looking to sign not necessarily who they will sign, maybe not even players they've been linked with but the players I believe they should be signing, uh, in my opinion of course but today, as I said, it's Tottenham, West Brom, West Ham and Wigan. And without a shadow of a doubt, this is the hardest bunch of teams I've had to try and um, predict who they should be looking to sign. And I don't know what the word is, but these, it's just really difficult. I find this one really difficult. Other than Tottenham, Tottenham is really easy because Tottenham I watch a lot of. I would say probably out of the whole of the Premier League, the two, three, te three teams I watch the least football of would be Norwich, West Brom, and probably West Ham, to be honest. They're the three teams I watch the least of their games, and two of them, West Brom and West Ham, are in this this episode. You could probably throw Wigan in there as the next team. These are the least teams I watch, so my knowledge of their squads is very... not I wouldn't say limited, but it's... It's not small, but it is limited. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is limited, because obviously with Tottenham, Tottenham for example, I know all their squad players, I know all of them. Um, and even small, slightly smaller teams than that. West, if, for example, Fulham, uh, you could say Everton, Aston Villa, I know their squads better than I know the likes of West Brom, West Ham. So this one's been really tricky for me. And they've only come up with two players for West Brom and West Ham both. Uh, we're going to come up with three. And Tottenham have come up with three, of course. So let's jump on right into it. So of course Tottenham, first of all. And... Really, their squad, it's a bit like Arsenal in the sense that it's go big or go home. If they want to make the Champions League push, just go big. Go big and get, get to the Premier League and spend the money. Daniel Levy has to spend the money back at AVB to bring in the best quality players to get this team to the Premier League. And then that money will be recoup recouped. You'll recoup that money uh, once you're in the Champions League because obviously the TV money and sponsorships, etc, etc. That said, however, I believe that this player, Fernando Lloriente, should be their first target, and it's got to be a striker. It just has to be a striker. Now, although he's big, he's in the same way that Ad Adebayor is big. He's much more, um, much more. Like, I don't know. The only way I can describe him is more like more like an oversight. He's like a giant ballerina. He's much more elegant on his feet than Adebayor is. Much better technique. Um, so a different sort of player, but can play that target man sort of role. But Tottenham are in desperate need of a striker as far as I'm concerned. They've got Jermaine Defoe, Adebayor, probably forgotten a couple, but they've got they've, they're limited options. They need, if they're going to get to the Champions League, and be serious about not just getting to the Champions League this season, getting in it next year, and the season after, and the season after that. They've got to make a firm push and really just cement themselves as a Champions League club. So this one, although... He's available on a free at the end of the season and probably will be available at a discounted price in January because Athletic Bilbao would look to make, make some money off of him if they can now. So it will be a discounted price, but it will be, be money well spent, definitely. This next one's a bit of an odd one. It's Mason Bennett. Now, this is by no means a player who they should be looking to sign uh, who's going to have an immediate impact. They should sign him and then loan him straight out again to Derby. Or to another club or something like that. Just just get him. Loan him out. Don't not keep him. Buy him now. Because if you buy him now. If you were to wait till the summer. And he's had that little bit more time. He would have developed so much so. I believe. Because what I've seen of him so far. Um, he's he's a real talent. And if, if you let him. If you give it another 5-6 months. His value is going to go up and up. So snap him up now. But snap him up. And then loan him straight back out again. Because just so he can carry on playing week in week out. And develop etc. But just so it'd be good. I think I think Tottenham would be a good club for him to go to. The only alternative to Tottenham, two teams, no, two teams I believe, other than Tottenham, who he should go to potentially are Arsenal and Liverpool. They're the only clubs who I believe would develop him right. Possibly Man United, you could argue, but I believe that these that Tottenham will be a really good fit for him to go to, and I think Tottenham should sign him with a view to learning him out, etc., etc., and developing him. Tottenham fans, you're not interested in the future, are you really? Nobody is. Everyone wants to know what their players are going to get. 
who the, who their clubs are going to be signing in uh, for the for the immediate future for now. So Jarmantino is the next one they should be looking to sign. Add an extra midfielder, a player they've been extremely heavily linked with. Uh, AVB seems to have a love affair with him, just loves him, and he, I, I can see completely see why this guy's amazing. And this guy would be for now and would be developed, you know, be a player who would hit the ground running, so to speak. It would cost an absolute fortune, but again, as I was saying, go big or go home, get to the Premier League, and Joe Moutinho is your man to add an extra bit of something, something to the midfield. So as I was saying, West Brom is a team who my knowledge of is quite limited, I'd say, actually. Quite limited. Um, looking through their squad, I don't know I don't know what it is. I just don't seem to watch their game. I don't dislike them or anything like that. I just don't seem to watch their games. I seem to avoid, manage to, manage to avoid watching any West Brom matches. I'd say I've seen this season maybe one, maybe, maybe poss possibly one. Um, so I can't really say who they should definitely sign, where their weaknesses are. But all I've done is just overlook their squad and see what I think they could do with an extra body, I guess. Whether or not that's a weak weak spot in their squad, I don't know. You'd have to let me know in the comments if you're a West Brom fan or you follow West Brom more closely than I do. So let me know in the comments, but let's crack on with the, who I recommend they should be looking to add to add an extra body. First player is Aurel Romeo, Romero from Chelsea on a loan deal. Just a loan, not permanent, just a loan deal. It, and this is providing that Chelsea signed Marouane Fellini, Fellini, as I suggested in a previous episode. So if, if that were to happen, if Fellini were to go to Chelsea, this would mean his op this, uh, Romero's opportunities would be limited, so a loan deal would be ideal for him to go to, play for a club like West Brom. And obviously Steve Clark's links with Chelsea make this deal possibly could actually happen, you know, if you think about it. So Romero, is it Romero or Romeo? I don't know. He'd be great, great signing though. The next player is Grant Hanley. Now, this is for both the future and for the immediate future. Well, long term future and the immediate future, I should say, actually. Because he's so young, but he's so talented now. He's really, very much, uh, he's developed really nicely so far, Scottish international. And he's a very, what I would call a West Brom type signing. They always seem to come up with these sorts of players, the home nation sorts of things, as well as, of course, players who aren't home nation but they they seem to sign quite a few home nation players in the past uh, whether or not all these players are at the club now you know obviously they're not all at the club now but they do have a habit of signing quite a few home nation players so i believe grant hanley is a deal that could possibly happen uh but as i was saying maybe not to make an immediate huge immediate impact maybe not to start regularly now because there's a, currently they've got some very good centre backs but Jonas Olsen springs to mind um, so yeah it's just an, an extra body as I was saying don't know, don't, I don't know why I, I just think Grant Hanley would be a really good fit at a club like West Brom I just one of those ones I can't really pinpoint why next one's West Ham United now again as I said earlier in the video another club who I seem to not watch a lot of their games so I don't know what I don't again I couldn't tell you why, I just don't seem to watch a lot of West Ham games. So I've got a couple of suggestions. I think they need a striker and an extra central midfielder. Now, they've got quite a few central midfielders, but I feel like they need an extra tank in the midfield, so to speak. So Pierre-Emerick Umbangyang, I, I can't say his name, apologise for that. Um, it's just prolific in Ligue 1. So for San Etienne, so I believe this guy would be a beast for a club like West Ham. And I think it could be the sort of scenario where he could do really well for a club like West Ham and then move on potentially because bigger clubs will come sniffing for him. Because if he does hit the ground running in the Premier League, then you can you guarantee, I mean, put your money on a bigger club coming in for him. But Certainly, for now, for West Ham to make sure they do survive and are nowhere near the relegation zone come the end of the season, a goal, goals from a guy like him would be awesome for them to have in their squad. Next one's Carl, Han Carl, Carl Henry sorry, from Wolves. Now, why I think he should go to them is another one where I just don't know why. I just got this feeling that he would be a really good fit for a club like West Ham. Just a gritty... Gritty midfielder who's not afraid to put his foot in. is very much a Sam Allardyce sort of player, I think. That's the big one. I think he's a Sam Allardyce type of player. Now, 
They've got a lot of um, central midfielders already in the West Ham squad, but I believe an extra gritty tank, as I said earlier in the video, midfielder would be would be ideal for them to have. And as I say, he is the Sam Aldast sort of player. Finally, we're on to Wigan Athletic, and now the final club of this series until I recap the transfer window in February. So, I've already said in this series that I think they should, Mayna Figueroa should go to Sunderland, I think it was. So they're going to need an extra left back. And also, I look at their centre back, and I think they need a centre back, and also a creative midfielder, stroke striker. I believe there's also something else they could do with to make sure that they're not in a relegation scrap. Well, currently, as a as I record this, I believe they are in a relegation scrap, but to try and pull away from that so they're not down to the final day of the season and shit, you know, desperate to survive, sort of thing. I guess. First player is Martin Olsen. Now, you're probably thinking he wouldn't go to a club like. Uh, Wigan, but I, I, I'd argue I think he would because currently he's in a, cl in a championship club in Blackburn who aren't going anywhere fast at the moment, given the fact they've just sacked their manager and um, or as I record this, they've just sacked their manager and listening to what their fans had to say, they're, they're not optimistic so I, I believe he may be willing to get out of a, get out of that situation and a move to a Premier League club such as Wigan might be might be something he'd be open to. Now he's a he, he can play left back and also play, basically he can play everywhere at the left is what I'm trying to say. He can play everywhere at the left so he'd be ideal replacement to have in the squad for Maynard Figueroa. Although they are different styles of player, Figueroa is much more defensive. Martin Olsen is much more attacking. Um, the, the formation and the squad could be adapted uh, to fit a player like Olsen. Now the next two signings I recommend are ex Leicester players and players I know well. One of them's an ex, one of them's current. Rich Stimmen being an ex Leicester player, player I watched for um, however long he was at Leicester. I just seem to remember him being an amazing centre back, and um, I think he'd be really good to fit into the um, Wigan defence and sure help shore up their defence because they've got a lot of Spanish players. The Spanish players are notorious for being technically very good, defensively sometimes not so good other than the really good spanish players generally speaking sometimes not so defensively solid so maybe an extra an extra english player who's willing to put his foot in sort of thing do the dirty work so to speak might be a good one and rich Stimmen, i think would fit that role for them the final player is anthony knockhart from leicester the french um he says he's a striker on this, but as far as I'm concerned, he's not a striker. He's a uh, attacking midfielder, straight winger who can play up front. He's not an out-and-out -out striker, in my opinion, from what I've seen of him this season, which is quite a lot, actually. And um, this guy is, I don't know, he's just <sighs> electrifying. He's literally, whenever he's on the ball, I find myself watching even more closely, just like wondering what he's going to do next, because he's so creative, and I believe that will just fit Wigan nicely, it would just give them something different to their attack, because as I say he can play up front and he can provide you goals but they've already got the likes of Aruna Kone and Franco De Santo up front so you don't necessarily need a striker, an out and out striker, you just need someone else to provide goals for the club to help them, obviously goals means winning matches and winning matches means no relegation, so I think Anthony Knockout will be really good and also fits him with the style of football that Roberto Martinez likes to play which is create yeah, Barcelona star, Arsenal style, etc. That's the style Martinez plays, and Knockout would fit this fit this style of football quite nicely. So that's it for this uh, this part of the series, I should say, because it's not the end of the series, because the end of the series would be in February when I recap the January transfer window. But let me know in the let me know in the comments what you think of all the signings I've recommended for all the teams so far in this series. Let me know what you think on all of them, not just this episode, and um, leave a like if you've enjoyed it, and also. If you think of a player, a position of a squad, uh, if you're a fan of, say, West Brom, and you think of a position that needs strengthening, let me know in the comments what, what position and also what players you think they sh your team should be signing or that, that team should be signing. Just get a discussion going, um, expressing your opinions on what should be, uh, what different teams should be looking to sign. Leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.